Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So, one of my New Year's resolutions was to finish all the books I get out of the library and return them all before I get new books out of the library. I've kind of basically already failed because I didn't finish all the books I got out previously, but that is because the library sent me a nice email that was like, knock knock, you owe the books back, you've already maxed out the number of renewals you have and some people have holds on these books. So I had to return them, so that's that. The good news is it's the library so I can just go back once they check them in and get the books back out again. But while I was there, I had to return all my books and I had read most of them. So to be fair, I'd read most of them. I decided to get more books out, of course, because I wasn't going to be without reading material and I got quite a bit. However, I think I'm going to be able to get to this rather quickly and I'm excited to see what these books hold. So let's dive in. Um, first, I guess we just go, go through these. Um, have to read what this is. This one is Traffic by Ricky Ducornet. Ricky Ducornet. Here, I'll put his name up here so that you can see it. This one is sci-fi, I believe, and it's kind of a weird future, like, mix between how humans are interacting with AI, and yeah, I don't know much else beyond that, but it seems kind of interesting, and I'm excited to see where this goes. It's pretty short, so if I hate it, I haven't committed too much time. Let me see how many pages this is. I've also never heard of this before. 88. So if I don't like it, I've only committed to 88 pages. I'll probably finish it even if I hate it, but I'm excited to see where this goes. It's about a, yeah, future humans and AI, I think. We'll see. The next book I have is Finding Fibonacci, The Quest to Rediscover the Forgotten Mathematical Genius Who Changed the World by Keith Devlin. So most of us are familiar with like the Fibonacci sequence or Fibonacci numbers, but I actually do not know much about the author of, or the namesake of that series themselves, Fibonacci. I believe Fibonacci was not his real name if I remember correctly, but I don't know a whole lot about him. So I'm excited to read this and see what I can learn about Fibonacci and I can report back and let you know. I feel like the cover was kind of nice and there's even a little bookmark, which is fun. So excited to read this. I've actually never seen this. This wasn't in the new section of the library. It was with the regular math books, but I hadn't seen this book before. So um, I don't know, I guess it's popular. Everyone else had it out, which is why I haven't seen it. So we'll see how that one is. Next up, oh, my receipt's in there is Ada Lovelace, The Making of a Computer Scientist by Christopher Hollings, Ursula, 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 Ursula Martin, and Adrian Rice. So Ada Lovelace is kind of important in the history of computer science, or so I've heard. I've heard her name before. I believe I actually have a book on my shelf, Ada's Algorithm by her. However, I do not know much about her. I have to be admit, I actually have not read this book yet, so shh, I'll have to get to that one. Um, but I'm excited to see what I learned about her. It seems pretty low commitment in the fact that it's not a huge, massive tome of thousands of pages, but I'm interested in seeing how she connects to computer science because I don't really know when she lived, but I thought it wasn't like in the 1980s. At least I don't think so. So I'm excited to see her con her contributions to computer science that I feel like she may have also been connected to math somehow. We'll see. I'm excited to read this and see what I learned about Ada Lovelace. Next up is a comic that my aunt recommended me and I've been delaying it for a while because for some reason I thought my library only had the ebook version. This is not true. I don't know why I didn't just check the real library instead of just assuming that they only had the ebook version because I had seen the ebook version and that is check please book one of is it hashtag hockey? I don't actually know. But this is a comic series. It's also for kids or teens. It's shelved in the teen section. So I don't know what to expect, but two people at this point have recommended this book independently to me. And I feel like that kind of says something. So I want to give it a try and give it a read. Also, now that I have the physical copy, I'm way more likely to read it. I just prefer holding a physical book in my hand and reading it as opposed to the ebook version. Ebook's fine and it's super convenient to just tote around my little tablet and read it and if that's the only way I can read it that's fine but I do prefer the physical copy and I'm much more likely to read this. Now this won't languish on my to read list for another two years while I procrastinate on it. I'll read it. So this one check please. Next was one that I saw the title of and thought was kind of funny so I checked it out and I'm excited to see where it goes. That is Kill the Farm Boy by Delilah S. Dawson and Kevin Hearn. I really hope I got the first book in the series. I think I did according to the inside cover. I try to go by these that like list what the author has worked on and this is the first one in this series and there's two other ones that seem to follow Kill the Farm Boy. So 
All things told, I think this is the first book in the series. Nothing is worse than getting home and realizing you've checked out book two or book three, and now you have to bring the book back to the library and get book one if you want to really follow the story. The only one that doesn't, the only type of book that doesn't apply to, I feel like, is cozy mysteries, but that's a kind of a different category. So, Killed Farm Boy is kind of a pun. This is in the science fiction, it's kind of like science fiction fantasy as far as I can tell. It's kind of a pun or a play on the fact that there's always a chosen one. Well, not always. There's like this trope, there's a chosen one in the fantasy world or someone who's going to save the day or a hero and they're the farm boy and they just don't know about their origins and someone has to come and take them on an adventure or they have to somehow go through this event where they discover that even though they're just a farm boy or they think they're just a farm boy, they have all these things. So I'm really excited to see what the authors take of this. I feel like it's funny that they're cognizant of the trope. And I feel like everyone is. It's okay. I don't hate it when I see it. I just know what it is. Whenever there's a farm boy in a fantasy novel, I'm like, stop, stop. We found the main character. <laughs> we found the main character. So I'm excited to see where this is going. And I hope it's a good one. I hope it's kind of funny. Also, the authors appear to be pretty prolific. There's two, Delilah Dawson and Kevin Hearn. And both of them have quite a bit of other books under their belt, which kind of makes me feel like they're probably pretty good. Um, I'm excited to read it. Obviously pretty good is subjective, depends if you like the author, but I'm excited. The next two are kind of related. I found them in the same section. They're both about uh, woodblock prints, Japanese woodblock prints. Um, I took an art appreciation course when I was in college and there was a section on Japanese woodblocks and it was probably one of my favorite sections, but I don't, I feel like if I remember correctly, we didn't spend as much time there as I wanted to. Obviously, our history is kind of big and comprehensive and too much to cover in a 16-week class, so the professor probably didn't cover anything to the depth that she wanted to, but I really like this section and wish we had spent more time on it, so I decided, well, I can educate myself when I found these in the library this afternoon. The first one is Andreas Mark's Jap Japan Journeys, famous woodblock prints of cultural sites in Japan. This, like the other one, is mostly just woodblock prints and little explanations. I'm excited to read this. I find the style very pretty, and I'm really excited to just curl up with a cup of tea and leaf through this. Also, the cover is really pretty on this one, too. And I do sometimes judge books by a cover. The second one in the same genre... Same topic is 100 Aspects of the Moon, Japanese Woodblock Prints by Yoshitoshi by Tamara Jarnes. So these are all by the same artist, if this is to be believed, and I'm excited to read it and make sure the woodblock prints I pick are appropriate. And I'm excited to read about the woodblock prints and browse through these. I think it's going to be interesting comparing this, which I do not believe is all about or all by the same artist yeah these appear to be by different artists compared to everything by the same artist i'm guessing i'm going to see a lot of his personal style in this one as opposed to the variety of styles here kind of uh, or at least like the artist's personal touch and i also think that it's going to be interesting to see if any of his works appear in here so these two will be interesting to read together and if i really like it i saw they had quite a number of more quite a number more books on this topic in the library so i plan to pick from should i continue to want to pursue this. The final books that I got actually have a little bit of story, but no one cares about the library, except for me. At least no one's as passionate about the library as I am. So I'm going to cut a long story short and say that my library card, I thought gave me access to this many libraries. And I found out this afternoon that it gave me access to this many libraries, as in there's a number more libraries that I can go to and check out books with my library card than I initially thought. And I didn't I've, I've lived in this library district for a number of years, or at least in and out of this library district for a number of years, so I don't know why I didn't know this. And I don't know why no one told me this, because this was super cool information to me, because it's a different library system, but apparently my library card works there. And I went there and I tested it, and it worked. So now I'm really excited. So I got some more books from that library, even though I already had all of these in the car. So, but I had to. And these are volumes 11 and 13 of the High Q series. So I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Why 11 and 13? That is because I actually have number 12 on hold and it should be coming in. So I really hope it comes in. 
my library, okay, so the library system that I normally use that I knew I could use my library card in only has up to volume 10. And some of those are in the ebook format, which I don't particularly prefer. I like the actual print version, but I was doing it because I had to and I love the series so much. I knew that I could read from like volume 11 to 45 or however long the rest of the series is. I know I could get it from other libraries in my state, which I am allowed to do. I'm allowed to order from basically any other library in my state and they will ship it to me. So that's a super cool feature that I already knew I had, but that kind of takes a couple weeks because they're shipping from who knows where. And this is speeding my process up because now I don't have to wait for that shipping process if one of the libraries that I now have access to has them. So I now only had to place a hold on volume 12 because 11 and 13 I found in print version and I get to read it in my preferred format and I don't have to wait for the holds to come in. I'm just winning all around here and I'm having a really good day so yeah I'm excited to read these two excited to see where this series goes so that's it that's it that's it just a huge huge stack of books this is it these are my books these are what I read I'm really excited to read these let me know what you're reading in January let me know which of these sound the most interesting to you stay tuned because I will be reviewing all of these hopefully if the library doesn't demand them back because I don't finish them in time but yes I'm excited to read these and I'm excited to know what you're reading as well, and I always take suggestions. Other than that, everyone, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you.